Hello there! Today I will be doing my review on the LEGO Star Wars The Bad Batch Attack Shuttle. It is set number 75314, comes with 969 pieces, and retails for $99.99 American and $139.99 Canadian. So it is one of the sets that for whatever reason is more expensive in Canada uh, to purchase than in the US, factoring in exchange rates. Uh, based off of the hit Bad Batch TV show and also a little bit of Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7 since this is when we first saw this ship and most of these characters though this pretty much the scenario in this takes place entirely during uh, the Bad Batch show. So without further ado let's get into this starting with the box. Now if you checked out my Lego haul video you'll notice uh, box damage and that was by choice. Uh, I, I got a pretty big call. If you haven't checked out the video, please do down below. But overall, uh, they offered me this one at a discount rather than getting a fresh box. I opted to go with it, you know, save some money. Uh, I guess maybe I shouldn't have since I <laughs> review, but I, I just felt like it was, you know, it saved me about $16 by doing this, factoring in taxes. So a little bit of box damage that you won't always find on these boxes. Generally, if you do, you can get a discount. But you can see some nice detail. You have the Bad Batch logo uh, up at the top, or, well, the Lego Bad Batch up at the top, which is awesome to see. Hopefully, we'll see that more often in other Lego Bad Batch sets. Uh, you can see the speeder bike chase with the ship. You also got the characters. You've got Hunter, uh, uh, Wrecker, Tech, Echo, and Crosshair in his Imperial outfit, as well as Gonk Droid, or now, as we know, as Omega calls it, uh, Gonky. On the back of the box, you see some of the details, some of the features. You can open up the top, which is probably more of a mistake than anything. Uh, you can hide some weapons, and then kind of just shows the Bad Batch just kind of hanging out. And then on the side here that I opened, you can kind of see some nice side box art, which is awesome to see. Well, without further ado, let's get into the rest of the set, starting with the main characters. So, to start off, we have... Hunter, the leader of the Bad Batch, and he looks awesome. He's got, you know, a very nice printing. Obviously, these aren't regular clone troopers, so they're, they're a little bit different, you know, in the darker armor, a little bit different molds, and Hunter is no, no exception. You can see some nice back printing, uh, no side printing on arms or legs, but front uh, leg printing and feet printing, which looks very good. Comes with two knives, no uh, blasters, which is a bit interesting. Uh, we see him use knives a lot in the show, but he does use blasters as well. Uh, you can see the nice printing. They decided to print the headband. I would have preferred if they double molded the hairpiece that comes with him. And then a bit more angry. And I'll just grab the hairpiece. And yeah. Decent hairpiece, but like I said, I would have liked if they molded it so it had like the red band around it and then also had it printed there because I think that would have looked a lot better because it goes around his hair. It doesn't hide in his hair, you know. Overall, though, very nice figure in Hunter. Next, we have Echo, and he looks pretty cool as well as everyone's favorite former 501st Arc Trooper. He does have arm printing. I'm trying to show it off better because obviously this is... An arm that isn't really a hand would have been nice if they molded uh, like something else in, instead of using a hand because you know he doesn't have a hand he can't hold things it's uh, a part that can plug into computers and whatnot like R2D2 you know but they opted just to go for gray hand very nice detail See the printing there. See the Bad Batch logo in the top right there. And then his head. Uh, just one side face print, obviously, because, you know, the back of his head has that. Almost like Lobot. Since he was experimented on by the Separatists. And overall, very nice figure. Comes with a standard little pistol that's uh, been around for years. Next, we have Tech. And this one is pretty cool. Uh, it's, they went for a more gray rather than white, which... You, you can understand why they felt the need to do that. Would have been nice if it was a little bit more accurate, but it's not the biggest deal. You can basically just pretend he got, he's been getting dirty. 
That's how I see it. He's got a, this is a nice printed backpack piece. For whatever reason, uh, he was the only one with backpacks, even though they all carry similar backpacks. But overall, it's not too big of a deal. He's got these nice pistols uh, that came in like the Mandalorian Starfighter, and I'm pretty sure they're relatively new. I, I haven't collected them other than in this these two waves, or this uh, these two sets, sorry. Uh, the one gripe, the helmet, as many people noted, you can't move the visor down. Would have been awesome if they figured out a way to do that, rather than just having it fully uh, stay like that. You can see him with his goggles still, and then just a regular face. And he is one of the other characters with a hairpiece, which is okay. I mean, you're probably not going to be taking it off him much anyways. But for those that would... It's an okay hairpiece. I'm not sure if it matches 100%, but it's not my biggest gripe with this set. And now we have Wrecker, and he looks awesome. He also got the leg printing, which a lot of the characters do, even though I didn't mention it. He's got the very nice uh, armor piece that is almost inspired by the old one they gave to Savage Press in my mind, but just a little bit shorter here, and beefer shoulders to kind of just show that he's a bigger character and I think it looks great. Uh, he does have back printing underneath this. I'm not going to take it off because it's pretty much the same as Hunter but overall very nice figure. Nice face print. Not double sided which is okay since you know he, he doesn't have a hair piece since he is bald but very nice figure indeed. He comes with a little I, I like to call these shotgun pistols but this one's probably my favorite. He's got the Iron Man helmet mold, but it doesn't pop open. It's just fully uh, in place, which I think looks really good. And now we have Crosshair in his Imperial armor as he's become an Imperial I can't remember what, uh, Special Forces or Imperial Shock Trooper, something like that. I can't remember exactly what name they gave them, but he looks pretty cool as well. It is unfortunate we never got an, uh, a crosshair like in his Bad Batch uniform. Who knows, maybe maybe one day they'll bring back uh, uh, figures in the May 4th promos, you know. Make May the 4th great again. But he's got a nice uh, printing, kind of showing the target on his eye that he has in the show. And overall, pretty nice figure, I would say. Very nice printing, you know, showing the dark helmet. Reminds me a lot of the uh, the famous Shadow Arf Trooper that we got as a minifig promo back in the day. But as a clone trooper, I think it just looks awesome. And the last one, which isn't really a figure, but they count it as one, is Gonkroid. Or Gonky, as Omega in the show calls it. You know, pretty standard, just brick built. Nothing special about it. Yeah. Now let's get into the speeders real quick. Here we have our first speeder, which is kind of almost a carbon copy uh, of the 501st one, which is nice. You know, I, I like when they're kind of similar. I know people might like diverse, but it kind of shows, you know, that there's the same place because they don't have all these different types all the time. But it looks, you know... It pretty much is that same. It's got some sick sticker detail right there. Also at the front there. And you can place a character. This is meant to be an Imperial speeder. So you would put Crosshair. Take off his weapon. Like so. And you could uh, maneuver these to have them hold it, but I'm just not going to. It does have some stud shooters, which I'm not going to shoot off because I generally lose them and I then step on them later, so I don't want to do that today. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice speeder, you know, just another one to add. Would I prefer them using the parts of this speeder especially and put it into the ship? 100%, but we'll get into that later. And then the last speeder is one we actually see in the show. Uh, plays a prevalent role during one of the episodes where Hunter steals it. 
though it shows on the box tech driving it, is the screen speeder. It's got some nice sticker detail there, up at the front as well. And you know, it's kind of unique, uh, being this light lime green color. I really like it. Like this one, I don't mind as much it being included. I just, I know they wanted something for the bad guys to have, but this is the attack show. You know, you, you don't see uh, them including like a speeder bike in the in the Razor Crest ship, for an example, just to lower the part count on the speeder or on the Razor Crest. And now we will get right into the Bad Batch attack shuttle. So the first thing you may notice about the attack shuttle is really how small it is. And I'll, I'll bring a comparison later on just to show the comparison really between this and the Razor Crest for an example, but it is a lot smaller than you might expect, especially for such a prevalent ship. They normally get the sizing pretty close to minifigure scale, and this one, it's just not the case. It is, in my opinion, way too small for what it is, and that can just be attributed to including the two speeders. I don't mind the green one, like I said before, but the Imperial one just, it seems unnecessary, and I, and I feel like a lot of people, even though, yeah, it's cool to get crosshair, as an Imperial, might have preferred to get the whole Bad Batch together and then just have this be their ship and then you can kind of pretend later when Crosshair defects. But it is still very nice, got some nice detail, the wings move so you can move them down quite far actually. You can kind of see, <laughs> make it into a triangle which obviously isn't accurate but still looks pretty cool. I'll just zoom out. Trying to get some more detail and this is a very nice printed piece which is awesome to see uh, pretty much every other piece you'll see is a sticker but this one was not so thankfully they didn't skip out on this one because uh, you know it just would have been annoying like the whole piece is printed which is very nice would have been nice if some of the other pieces were printed alas that was not the case and then we'll put it back into landing mode like so and then the last thing that you can really do is, of course, pop this open, which is okay, but there's no locking mechanism, which I know a lot of YouTubers that have already been able to get this early have made note of, which really prevents you from holding it effectively. You have to grab it basically from under here, but the problem with that is right there and on that side are some stud shooters, or, uh, well, flick fire missile, whatever they're called, you know, these type of push fire missiles, I believe is what they're called, or spring loaded shooters. And they're, they're fun features. I know kids probably love them, but on a set like this, you, you do find yourself uh, having that issue. Like at first, when I first started playing around with this, I felt that was issue was a little bit exaggerated. Maybe just the guy had too big a hands <coughs> with the issue, but then I did it a couple times as well, where you just, you're just you trying to find a good place to hold it, and then all of a sudden you're firing it off accidentally, which can be annoying, and especially if you're not trying to shoot it, it's just annoying. Like That time, I meant to do it, but there's not really a good place to grab that prevents you from having that happen. So, it, well, that time I completely didn't mean to have it happen, it's just how I was trying to position myself, you know? So I feel like that's a big oversight. It's probably, I, I generally leave my uh, missile shooters out generally, just cause, you know, I, I don't play around. I, I, I display my sets pretty much entirely. You know, I'll play around a little bit, but generally I, I just don't use those type of play features. Kids may like them, but I, I feel like they, even they might have some issues cause they're gonna have to probably hold it with two hands, which means they're gonna be shooting off both when maybe they don't want to shoot off any. And then of course, the inside, way too cramped. Just, there's no room at all. Like yes, you can fit figures inside, which I'll show off in a moment, but it's just too cramped overall. There is some nice sticker detail. Uh, so on that side, kind of hard to get the right lighting, my apologies, but is like the invisible hand. And then you have this is almost expired from the episode Cat and Mouse, showing that type of clone trooper pilot or like special pilot officer or something. 
which is kind of cool to get, but there's just you you can fit the four Bad Batch members in the ship, but we know there's other members, and whether or not Lego knew about Omega or not, even then, I, I feel like this set should have been designed as to fit the entire team as it first was. And then later on, we get things that uh, kind of represent what happens in the Bad Batch show. Because, I mean, this set spoiled pretty much that Crosshair turned. You know, no one really knew that was going to happen. And then I, we pretty much knew once the leaked images came out and all the information came out that what was going to happen in the show, which was very disappointing. And I'm sure Disney got on Lego for that. So I, th I just think it would have been more beneficial to have some more pieces or make it a little bit bigger and fit, have all five figures included in their Bad Batch uniform just as a way to collect these figures and then in the Winter Wave include, you know, a bad crosshair figure. But I'll just quickly uh, fill up the set with the characters just to show you guys how they all fit in there. Here I have all the characters inside the ship. So you can fit them in. Uh, in text case, you have to take off his helmet as it is too bulky, as well as his backpack. Uh, didn't have to take off Wrecker's shoulder plate. And then they fit in like so, which works. But like I said, this feels like such a big oversight. We've seen in the past them finding ways to have locking mechanisms, even small ones, on it just so this you can use this. But they clearly couldn't find the stability because it's such a smaller scale ship than what we would normally get that they just felt it was better to go like this and that was their call but I'm hoping down the line we get a maybe a UCS Bad Batch shuttle if the show runs multiple seasons I'm sure maybe we will but then again we've never gotten an Ultimate Collector Series Clone War set the gunship doesn't count but you can fit the characters in. A little bit hard. This echo here, he wouldn't stay in. So it's not it's not the best uh, front cockpit area either. But now let's, I'm just going to do a quick size comparison, kind of showing uh, this set compared to another set, and I just knocked off a part. My bad. So as you can see, we have the Bad Batch shuttle as well as the Razor Crest, and you can really see the size difference between the two ships. It is just, it's not close. And the reason I bring this up is I feel like they should be at least close to a similar size, you know. Uh, overall, I just feel like the set is a bit too small. You know, yes, it's 900 pieces, but overall, it just is overall like a really overpriced set for what you get. Yes, you're getting all these exclusive minifigures for the time being, but... Let's be honest here, like with the Bad Batch show, we're going to get at least another set, if not multiple sets, of the Bad Batch characters, meaning these minifigures aren't going to be exclusive, and that's just going to make the set even worse, so, in, in my opinion. I do like the look of the set, and it's not too big of a deal to me because I will just be displaying the set, but I still wish there was a little bit more to it. Uh, now, let's get into my final thoughts, if you haven't been able to tell them already. The Bad Batch Shuttle is a good, albeit flawed set. At just 969 pieces, this set is extremely small compared to what really should have been expected in a set like this. Uh, the speeders included are okay. I would have preferred just the one green speeder bike included while investing the other pieces into this build uh, of the overall ship. I would have also preferred to have this set be entirely based on the pre-turned Bad Batch characters, meaning have Crosshair in his Bad Batch uniform, in order for us to get the all these characters together in their outfits before the Empire. Because I feel like that is something a lot of people were very excited for. The set has one critical flaw, being the ability to hold the ship when you're uh, playing around and flying with it, which really makes it difficult to play with. And on top of that, the price, it's overpriced in the U.S. at about $100 U.S. And it's even worse in Canada as it is about almost a $10 to $15 price increase in Canada. Meaning it would be cheaper for me to go down to the United States, buy the set, and bring it back rather than me pay for it at full price in Canada. Now I managed to get 
a discount on this set because of the significant box damage that happened while it was shipping, as you can see right here. But people are going to normally be paying $139.99 Canadian plus taxes, which depending on where you live could be a lot higher. You know, I live in Alberta where taxes are pretty low as it is right now. But if I was living in Ottawa or uh, Vancouver where there's also PST taxes, it's just going to be even more expensive. Having said that, I would definitely be looking at getting the set on sale. Uh, I wouldn't buy this immediately. Uh, I would wait until, if you're going to buy it at full price, I would get it during double VIP points. I believe the set before it launched was available for pre-order during double VIP points. So hopefully if you pre-ordered it, you pre-ordered it during that time. So you got at least uh, rather than 5% cash back, 10%. Just to get something back. I do want to like this set. I, I really do. But it's just. It feels like the Lego designers. Had an idea. And then just were like. Eh. Let's just do this instead. Because I feel like the set could have been a lot better. It could have been as good. If not better. Than the Razor Crest set that we got. But overall it's just. It's just a flawed set. However, that is my opinion. Let me know down below what you guys think of this set. Have you gotten it? Are you planning on getting it? Are you fans of the Bad Batch? Let me know down below, and please don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a great day, everyone.